very important rabbi, Rabbi Arthur Schneider. Shirley and I were lucky to be with him on his 75th birthday, the 50th year of his rabbinate. And what he has done to bring people together, you have to read his books, you have to see his life. He's very important. He just came back from Russia where they celebrated the liberation from the death camps. Hey, Rabbi, come and say hello to the group. We have to move the program, but Rabbi has to leave and I want him to say hello to you. Thank you so much for coming, Rabbi. You know that Joe is indefatigable. You cannot say no to Joe. And you cannot say no to Ben Gilman. So I'm delighted to be here in your company with my fellow Holocaust survivor, Tom Nantos, Congressman Hyde, my colleague, Rabbi Potashne, clergyman, and above all, a reunion with my friend, Bishop Sope. I'm so glad that we meet here under the wonderful auspices of this uh, organization. I saw my synagogue burning in Vienna in 1938. I was a child and I still remember. But there was one country that admitted Jews from Vienna. Albania. And that stuck with me. We Holocaust survivors, we can understand what it means to live under tyranny and oppression. And thank God we got rid of both the Nazi tyranny and the communist tyranny. I felt your pain, and I rejoiced in your joy. And so in 1999, when Kosovo really was oppressed, I convened with the Appeal of Francis Foundation, and Bishop Sophie was there. A summit meeting in Vienna. This was just before the Ramone Conference in Paris. And we came out with a declaration, which is valid to this day, a crime perpetrated in the name of religion is the greatest crime against religion. <laughs> and uh, Cardinal McCarrick, then Archbishop McCarrick, and I traveled to Skopje, and we saw the suffering of the Albanian people displaced from Kosovo. We felt their pain and anguish. So, I say to you all, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. Just came back from Moscow for the 60th anniversary of the end of World War II. And to see the President of the United States in Moscow, when we had a Cold War, to see the Chancellor of Germany in Moscow, shows that there comes a time when there is conciliation. Every conflict comes to an end. Don't give up hope. Every conflict comes to an end. 100 year war ended. 30 year war ended. World War I ended. World War II ended. Korean War ended. And your suffering will also end, and the Albanian people, wherever they are, will be free. And we support you. God bless you all. By the way, Rabbi is hosting lunch for Bishop Sophie, Don Luis Murphy, and Father Seppi on Monday before they go to Washington. So thank you so much. We're going to have a lot of time. Oh, tomorrow. It's Monday tomorrow. You're right. We'll be there. Before we visit Cardinal Egan at 2.30, we're going to be visiting uh, the Rabbi. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, we have to begin the program, uh, the awards, and we're going to start with Norm Gershwin. Now, you know, 
It is said that the truth cannot be suppressed, that somehow the truth has the will to survive. You can fool some of the people some of the time, you can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And if you're dealing with the truth, ultimately you're going to win. Isn't that right? Are we dealing with the truth in the Kosovo? And with the Albanian people? So you're going to win. Have hope, like the rabbi said. But don't sit back with a glass of wine or rocky and think it's going to happen automatically. We have to work for it. They say God helps. But you have to do the first half of the work. God does the second. It's a good partnership. And we're working hard, aren't we? So I think we're going to do this. And it's got to be soon. I think it's going to be this year or shortly thereafter. Now, Norm Gershman, someone I knew when I was a partner in Arthur Anderson. We had business dealings together. I go to Congress and I lost sight of him. He lost sight of me. He moves to Aspen, Colorado. He's retired. But I knew him then as a world-class fine art photographer. I knew him then as a good human being. Little did I know he would read the book Rescue in Albania in Aspen and read about the story of the Jewish, of the Albanian people who saved the Jews and he'd be so moved and he found my name with my number. I haven't changed my number in 20 years. So he calls me and he says, Joe, I read this book and I am just amazed. You know how this has lifted my spirits because my friends, my Jewish friends are depressed. All they keep hearing about is Muslims killing Jews. And now we see that the Albanian people, mainly the Muslim people of the Albanian nation, risk their lives to save so many Jews. And I am now going to do something because it's important to me in my life. And he's done that. And for that, he is one of our three honorees tonight. And we are going to give Norm Gershman, and only congressmen have gotten this so far. Congressman Hyde has it. Congressman Lantos has it. Congressman uh, Kilman has it. Congressman Rohrbacher has it. Wesley Clark has it. And now Norman Gershman has it. Hand carved for Fuya. The American Eagle of Shaponia. Let me turn the floor over to Norm Gershman. Give him a round of applause. And all the way from Colorado to be with us. Thank you, Joe. In just a moment or two, I'm going to show you a uh, preview of a uh, of pictures and portraits of Albanians that rescued Jews in World War II. I traveled uh, last May, spent almost a month in Albania, and uh, in, in October we went back to Albania and we went to Kosovo, soon to be Kosovo. Executive Director of a new uh, foundation called the International Besson Foundation. In, in doing my original research, I went to Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, and only found 35 families that had been recognized as righteous amongst nations. Righteous Amongst Nations, uh, and the reason why I believe there were so few at the time was because of what happened after World War II under the most rigid communist system where contact with those Jews and their rescuers in Albania had was broken for well over 50 years. But I was fortunate enough to meet the Albanian-Israeli Friendship Association in Tirana. And they found for me not 35 families, but hundreds of Albanian families, both in Albania as well as in Kosovo. And what you'll be seeing with, with me tonight, hopefully, is it's a 25-minute presentation of those portraits of those Muslim Albanian 
Palestinians arresting Jews. And the reason why we're focusing on Muslim uh, Albanians is that the world outside this room doesn't know that even Albania is a Muslim country. And the idea that Muslims save Jews in this world today is just not known. And that's why we focus on Muslims that rescued Jews in World War II. And I fully acknowledge that if there were 10 families that rescued Jews in Albania, seven were Muslim families, three were Orthodox or Catholic. is to show you some of these pictures of Muslims that rescued Jews in Albania. Thank you. <laughs>